layout letters, templates, and stencils. How can they help you to start your wood sign business? More coming right up. Hello, it's Henry from Woodworking by LPI, and today I kind of want to introduce you to a new subject, layout letters. Okay, um, a lot of folks when they get started in uh, wood sign creation, they don't have a lot of money to do, you know, uh, buy all the equipment, the CNC's and uh, the, route, the routers and all that fun stuff, you know, that's expensive. Of course, all expensive. And I try to aim my videos um, to what do you have around the house or as best I can or extreme low budget as much as I can. Uh, because I know when I got started out, I didn't have a lot of money. <laughs> I still don't have a lot of money, <laughs> but I didn't have a whole lot of money to start out with. And um, I had to figure out ways to do it. Okay, so what I did was I uh, created stencils and or templates uh, to lay out and uh, put out on uh, wood to carve out letters. And I had to place them um, in such. We're going to get into all, all that here in just a moment. Um, but kind of want to give you more of a background as to why um, we use uh, templates okay um, templates are made to form outlines on on uh, wood to create a edge for you to route around okay so we use our router and if you watch some of my other videos you know we use our our router and then we hand carve okay so that's what these handles here on this placement are for to give you stability to move you know, around the router with your 60 degree blade, as I mentioned before in other videos. So you can get really creative with these letters. Okay. And I have an example of one font laid out here for uh, the video today. And I have a couple other fonts over here that I could, uh, I could show you and in different sizes. And this is basically my old set. And on occasion I still use them, but mostly I use the CNC these days. It, um, it helps out a lot and it cuts my time down because if you have a production run um, as a business and you do a lot of signs over and over and over again this is a great way to start but it gets a little tedious and very time consuming um, so that's one of the downsides to the layout letters and one of the advantages to the CNC but um, we all need to start somewhere and this is where I started now you can do this with a router you could do it with a Dremel um, I've seen people get really really creative and, and even up to hand carving um, uh, these letters out after putting the uh, templates on. So, um, how do you create these? Well, you can create them by many, many different ways. Um, mostly, the, and the easiest way to do that would be to get on your computer at home, or if you don't have a computer at home, you can do it at a friend's house or even a library for that matter, and use like Word or PowerPoint or something like that. And you can type these out on the screen at a, uh, a fairly large font, measuring the sign. These, this here is two inches. I hope you can see that. That's two inches <clears throat> tall and you can do that and print it out and then you can, can uh, glue it onto a piece of wood and then you can cut them out okay you can use a jigsaw or you can use this coping saw or other various means and like I said I explained that all in uh, my posts and the post name on that is cutting out uh, shape templates designs patterns for wood signs um, I'll put the uh, put the title of the uh, post down down below so if you go to Google, you can search that and you look under woodworking by LPI um, or my blog, you can see it, how you can create these. And you can do it fairly cheaply too. It really doesn't take a lot of money. It takes a little effort, um, but you know, it's all worth it in the end. So let's take a look at what I got here. Okay. I'm going to pull you over here and take a look at what we got. Okay, so I mean, the, people can get creative. You know, you can do a whole a kind of different things on these things. I mean, you can do all different various shapes and sizes. You know, the and, the exclamation point, the and sign, the pound. Okay, and then numbers, and these are all in different fonts. This here, this font here happens to be the uh, Western style font, and then you can do, you know, the. You've probably seen this on several other signs. If you've looked around at several uh, woodworking signs, you've probably seen this um, here and there, and. Here's uh, we're spelled out wood. And this is what we're going to be doing today for the uh, for the example wood. Okay, and then flag. Okay, and I'll kind of show you how I store these. I put these in a um, 
kind of like one of those carrying cases, you know, you divide up for for screws and nails and things like that. And I labeled them. This is Western style, two inch, one and a half, and one inch. And then over here is the Claritin font, or Claritin font, two inch, one inch, and one and a half inch. And as you can see, you know, they get really kind of small. But we're working with the two inch today, so it makes it a little better for video. Okay, then over here I have other things, you know, that you can pull in. This and here's a, a snowman. I don't know if you can see that or not. A snowman and, you know, things for like holiday. And there's a coffee cup that I've used once before. And I also have hearts. And all kinds of sort of different things. And as you can see, they get creative. Okay, lighthouse and then uh, there's a cat and... Of course, the old skull. Okay, so now I've kind of shown you a little bit of what I got over here. Let's kind of go over the tools that we're going to need and what we're trying to accomplish. Okay, so you kind of seen what I've got laid out. There are different varieties of this. You can either create them on your own or um, you can you can get them. I mean, you, there are places you can get these, and I'll uh, I'll put a link uh, down in the um, the uh, bottom in the description, as well as uh, I'll put it on my recommended uh, products page at woodworkingbylpicustom.com. So, all right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to put a couple of the imprints on here just to show you the example of how these uh, layout letters work. Um, it's gonna be a short video for the most part, but as I mentioned in previous videos, uh, we're, <laughs> I'm gonna do a lot of these um, low budget, uh, starter, beginner type things, because I really wanted to show how I got started and how you can get started. Um, because this is really fun stuff. This is cool. So, and, okay, so we got our wood. And, okay, we got our wood. And you should sand this and make sure it's free of the sealer and smooth. Okay, because you're going to be cutting into it. You could do, you could do uh, outset letters or inset letters with this, either one. It really doesn't make a difference. You're just looking for the, uh, for the design. Um... If you have another question about can I combine these with other things? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I have, if I can get it out, I have a cat print or a dog print, however you want to look at it. Okay, and in actuality, I only wanted one, but as you can see on the opposite side, I taped it off on this side. But on the opposite side, it had multiple. So it kind of makes it look like, so you can take it and you can angle it, you know, so it makes it look like, you know, footprints and such. I mean, you can get really creative with this stuff. These are just pre-done, but you can create your own. You know, if you have a uh, local football team, high school football team, you're wanting to do something for or whatever, get permission. <laughs> okay. Licensing is always a good thing. Never use anything trademarked or licensed with, or trademarked or copyrighted without a license, an authorized license to use. Good tip. Um... So we're going to get our board and our other board, okay, and have a straight ruler. Okay, this is going to help us line it up. Okay, we got our paint. And this is the paint I pretty much use on about 95%. 95% of the paint jobs um, that I had to use for my lettering. So I had this on my recommended uh, products page on my blog. And... You can get it at Amazon a lot cheaper than you can get it out in stores. Just a tip for you there, especially if you buy it in a six pack bulk. Okay, and of course it comes in colors and such. So, enough of all that fun stuff. So we're gonna place this. How do you place these on here? You know, you just randomly put them on? Well, you can do that, um, but there is a method to the madness, believe it or not. So I'm gonna take my uh, handy dandy uh, tape measure Okay, and a pencil. You ever had a song stuck in your head? I hate that. It just goes on all day in your head and you can't get it out of your head. Um, so I'm going to measure down about an inch off the top here. And that's going to be our top line. I'll show this to you here when I, when I get done. About an inch. Okay, and they're two inch letters, so it's gonna be three. 
And, and I'm not doing anything fancy with this. Like I said, this is just purpose for the for the video, so you can see how these work. Okay. So now I'm going to take the uh, a yardstick, if you will, kind of more or less. This is a metal version, but okay. And I'm going to draw a straight line on these. Some folks do these all kind of different ways. Um, I'm kind of simple about it. Okay, and the biggest question I get on all these are, how do you keep them straight? You know, how do you keep your letters from, from going bonkers, you know, and, and curving and turning and all that fun stuff? Well, that's what the lines are for, okay, to set them. Okay, so some people, when they do the separation of the letters, that's another question that's out there I see a lot. How do I, how do I keep the distance between the letters accurate? So, okay, so some people do it by, by means of, hey, they just eyeball it, you know, and they make sure and just sit back and look at it, which you should do anyway, anytime that you're, you're setting up something, either carving or whatever. Obviously, you need to measure as best you can, okay? Um, some people, as I said, eyeball it. And what I mean by eyeball it is obviously, you know, you set it up and you just, you take a peek at it. Does it look right? Does it look straight? Um, some people are very particular um, about, you know, specifically measuring and specific this and specific that. Okay. I'm kind of somewhere in between. Um, a lot of the signs I do are considered rustic. And, well, rustic means... Um, that it's going to have, you know, uh, it's not going to be perfect, really. That's basically what it comes down to. It's not going to be perfect. So what I'm trying to do is make sure it is as close as possible as I can. So, all right, I measured down an inch from the top, and these are two-inch letters. So I measured down two inches, and basically I'm just going to do straight across here. So this is how I keep my letters straight across the board. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so are you concerned about being in the middle? Well, yeah, obviously we're concerned about being in the middle. So I'm gonna make a determination. This is 24 inches long, half of 24 is 12. So we're gonna make a mark of 12. if I can hold on to the tape measure today. Okay, and then I'm gonna take the, uh, the, yard, the yardstick for the straight edge. All right, so, now I know where straight is and I know exactly where the center of the board is. Now don't worry about the markings on this board. You're gonna sand these off so you'll really never see them. And um, after you sand them off and you stain it and, and such, you're, you're not gonna see these pencil marks. Um, interesting. Um, you can write all kinds of notes all over, you know, measurements, notes and such. Okay, so let's get to the placement of the letters. I, I really don't get over crazy. <laughs> it has to be so precise of an eighth of an inch or a 32nd of an inch. Um, I really don't do that. You know, it kind of takes away some of the character of the sign. So why do that? All right, so I'm gonna place a letter here, up in this, in this realm here, and then I'm also gonna put this other uh, flag letters, and I'm gonna put them here, and I'm gonna match it up with the bottom of the line. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm gonna arrange this out. And it says wood flag. And I know why you're saying wood flag. Well, because I really wanted to incorporate that piece, which is really cool. So I'm gonna take and put these right here. And, I'm, and what I'm doing is I'm eyeballing this, okay? I mean, I'm trying my darndest just to make sure that it really looks right. 
And I'll show you here as soon as I get them all on. I'm lining them up. I'm kind of looking at the spacing. I'm looking at is it touching the line to get it straight? Is it crooked? Is it intentional? Is it not intentional? See, because you can set these as crooked if you really wanted to. I mean, that might be the character of the sign. You never know. All right. All right. So we got our letters pl uh, placed. Let me uh, bring you over here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm using the top line as the guide for that right there for the top. And I'm using the bottom line as the placement for these right over here. Now this, this piece of wood is probably not a good example um, to leave enough space on the bottom and the top. But the premise of this basically is, hey, you see how I'm placing them. You see this the strategy that I'm using. It's really, really simple. I just measured from the top, drew a line off with the, uh, the yardstick here. And then I placed uh, another line, which was the height of the letters. And then I used those as guides to set the lettering on. Pretty simple stuff. So let's look at placing our flag somewhere around here. Well, nope, let's don't do the flag yet. Let's do, let's do the skull. Okay, see, you can place this anywhere. Okay, you can place it there, you can place it over here. Okay, so you kind of get the idea. Along with, you know, other signs and symbols and numbers and, and, and things, okay? You know, you're all lining it up on those lines. Of course, I know this makes absolutely no sense of what there's on there, but I'm just trying to show you a representation so if you wanted to do number six and say, for example, you wanted to put it off to the side and you could do number six and you're going to set that like that, or you can turn it. You can get creative really on this. Okay. But for today's purpose, this is really what we're wanting to do. And I'm going to set that kind of straight like that. I'm going to eyeball it. And I'm going to take a peek at this and make sure it's straight. And then after um, I make sure it's straight, we're going to paint it so you can see the outline of it. Okay, so we got it all straightened out. We got a set on there. We got aligned up to the lines. We're kind of eyeballing the spacing on it to make sure that it's even. All right, so we got everything set. We got everything placed. So let me get my mask on here because we always talk about safety here. All right, and I'm going to put some gloves on. Gloves. These are really cool gloves. Um, you can get them at Sam's, or just where I get them at least. And I get them in uh, 200 uh, a pack. And they come in double packs for 400 total. And I go through a lot of gloves uh, with stains and sealer and all that fun stuff, you know. So, okay. Get a little dirty today out here. All right. So, we're gonna wrap this up with painting the paint. I always store my paint upside down like that. And the reason I do that is so things when they settle, I know it's gonna settle on the other side, but it seems to settle better on that side and also settles better when it's, if, you, if it's cold, okay? And then when I turn it back over, as I'm getting things done and shake it, it seems to mix better. So little, little tip there as well. So, when you paint these, you don't want to be, let me see, hold on, let me move this over here just a little closer so you can see what I'm doing here. So 
So when you paint these, you don't want to be dead on close like this. Okay, not a good thing. It will move the letters. So what you want to do is you want to be about six, eight inches away. Okay. You want to go directly down on it at perpendicular like that. Perpendicular or straight. And then you want to do it in bursts. Okay. So let me make sure this is cleared out. All right. And then what I'm going to do is just do it in bursts. Okay. And the reason you want to do it in bursts is because you don't you don't want the letters to move which would really mess up your outline when you go to carve so i'm just doing it in bursts here looks like my uh, paint's getting a little low so i'm gonna try and finish this out like i said it doesn't take much i might be doing a little further than six eight inches maybe i don't know maybe close to a foot And you'll see how cool this comes out. Okay. You'll see how cool this comes out. Okay, let me move you back over here. Well, actually, no. I'll tell you what. Okay, I'll, I'll just leave it here. Um, you need to let this dry for a little bit. But for the purposes of this uh, the video, I'm going to go ahead and just pull them off. Okay. So I'm going to do that. And I want you to see how cool this come out okay look at the detail on the edges of the carving and look how the flag come out with all the stars and everything all the detail okay so looking at it from this perspective now when you go to carve you can carve on the inside of the letter or you can carve on the outside edge and create an outside letter that's really how it is folks i mean that's that's, that's how easy it is to put layout letters layout letters onto the wood to create your pattern Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense and you understand what it is. And I really didn't want to make this a really long video. Okay, I get the camera back over there. <laughs> all right. So, all right, I'll show this to you one more time. Give you an idea of what this looks like. So you see all the detail. So now you can carve inside and you can carve on the outside of each one of the letters. So you can do an inset letter, you can do an outset letter. And then you have the detail of the flag over here that you can, wrong side, right? Yeah. Um, you can carve the detail out on the flag. You can color this, you can stain it, you can add the edge to it that I, I mentioned in the other video. And you have a sign. Now, I know wood flag meat is really funny, but for the purpose of the demonstration, these are the letters I grabbed. So, okay, let me take all this off. I hope this helped out. Did it provide any value for you? The question I have for you, have you ever done anything like this? And I'd, I'd like your thoughts uh, in, the, uh, in the comments down below as to, you know, what have, if you've done any of this, what have you done? And I wanted to show my version of how I started out as a beginner. Um, this has been several years ago. I still have the letters and, and such because on occasion I still use them because it still works. It's, um, it's a cheap solution to carving signs. Let me know down below if you have any questions or any suggestions. Please hit that subscribe button and that bell um, and like the video. And let me know if you have any questions. Thank you much. Appreciate your time. See you on the next video.